the New York Jets losing was not as bad as people realize. The Jets losing was not the best moment for me because I made a prediction that the Jets would blow out the 49ers and the opposite happened. So I was half right. The 49ers had 401 total yards of offense to the Jets, 266. The 49ers possessed the ball 38 minutes to the Jets, 21 minutes and 20 seconds, which has been the lowest amount of time that Aaron Rodgers has ever possessed the ball in his career in the regular season. When watching this game, I was very excited. In the first quarter, the Jets do fumble. Brees Hall fumbles. Alan Lazard drops a pass that would have been a first down. But it was also one of the most competent offensive drives that I have seen from a Jets fan in quite some time. Three third down conversions from Aaron Rodgers to Garrett Wilson. Brees Hall scoring a touchdown. Everything seemed to click. The Jets were up 7-3. to three. I thought we were in for a great game. But in the second quarter, the 49ers went on a 12-play drive where none of those plays were runs. And against the run, the Jets couldn't do anything. Not only were there gaping holes, the calls that Shanahan was dialing up, it was taking this Jets defense for a loop. They schooled them. The Jets looked unprepared. They didn't have a counterpunch. Kyle Shanahan, after the first quarter, 49ers got stopped on offense a couple times, and he had a counterpunch. The Jets didn't have a counterpunch. Jordan Mason, even when he was touched, broke a ton of tackles. The Jets missed 15 tackles. The Jets allowed eight straight scoring drives. The first time that that's happened in the last 45 seasons. And this is the New York Jets we're talking about. It's only week one. I'm not panicking. I think the Jets still have one of the best rosters top to bottom. Mike Williams, this was his first game back from injury. Aaron Rodgers, this was his first game back from injury. This is a brand new offensive line that's playing together and needs chemistry. And the defense is way too talented, in my opinion, to get beat like this again. One thing is certain. Hassan Reddick, we need him. We need a pass rush. Even when the Jets did get the Niners into third down situations, the 49ers torched us because Brock Purdy had all day to throw back there. A pass rush is needed for this team. Hassan Reddick can give us that. I'm hopeful that he will play for the Jets this year. Joe Douglas, Robert Sala, they can't mess around. We need Hassan Reddick back. Even though I have become the laughing stock of social media with the 49ers and on TikTok because I predicted a Jets blowout loss, I'm not feeling too bad because you can't feel any worse than as a Jets fan that you did last year after week one, even if that resulted in a win. What this game showed me is pretty clear. The Jets aren't on the 49ers level right now. And maybe they never get there. But as of right now, they are not there. The 49ers without Christian McCaffrey, they were able to run the ball. I think Jordan Mason deserves a lot of credit. 28 carries, 147 yards, one touchdown. This is being framed as, oh, a jet. the Jets' defense couldn't even hold a backup running back. Kyle Shanahan has been able to run the ball with whoever back there. Christian McCaffrey just made it overpowered Kyle Shanahan has gotten success out of almost any running back that he's had on his roster and Jordan Mason I think is quite good his rookie season he averaged six yards per carry second season he averaged 5.2 yards per carry whenever I've seen Jordan Mason play he looked pretty damn good I think a promising sign for the 49ers is that their offensive line looks much improved rookie Dominic Puny right guard He's an absolute stud. He's a monster. And the 49ers got a good one with him. 
as a Jets fan, I'm not feeling too down about this game. We lost. I came into the game thinking we would win. It is what it is. But I still have a lot of belief in where this Jets team can be because I do think Aaron Rodgers looked good coming off the injury. He still has that power in his throw. He still has that juice in his arm. But the play calling has to be better moving forward. We can't run so much on early downs. We can't run the ball on first and second down. And then third down, we're asking Aaron Rodgers to save us. That was my initial takeaway of it. After having some time to think about it, I'll tell you guys how I feel. To start off with the 49ers, the 49ers should feel much better about their offensive line this year. Lenore has taken a step forward. The 49ers have one of the best secondaries in the NFL with Charvarius Ward and Lenore. Those two guys are absolute studs with Ward being one of the best corners in football. Even with Greenlaw out, Fred Warner is able to change games. And Devondre Campbell isn't a slouch either. He's a pretty damn good linebacker. This defensive line, Malik Collins, that was a huge pickup. I think he's going to replace almost, if not all, of what Eric Armstead gave them. I think Malik Collins is that good. Leonard Floyd is as reliable as a pass rusher opposite of Nick Bosa that you can ask for. This 49ers team is better this year than it was last year. That was my takeaway from the game. For the Jets, there are more question marks now coming out of this game. And it's not so much so with the defense. It's really not that at all. I actually think the defense is going to be fine. My question with this team is Nathaniel Hackett, the play caller. Is this an Aaron Rodgers only offense where he gets to call the shots and he's not getting challenged? The top teams in the NFL, most of them at least, have a play caller that is creative and that keeps defenses guessing. The Lions with Ben Johnson. The Rams with Sean McVay. The 49ers with Kyle Shanahan. The Chiefs with Andy Reid. The teams that don't have that have MVP star level quarterbacks. The Bills with Josh Allen. The Ravens with Lamar Jackson. And I don't group Joe Brady and Todd Munkin into the group that I just named previously. The basis of the Jets this year was that their defense will be so elite that Aaron Rodgers doesn't have to be Aaron Rodgers. But based off what we've seen, it might look like he has to be that. Like I said, I think the defense will be fine. But when you're in an offense that isn't making things any easier on offense. You have a play caller that's not making things easier. Everything on offense is going to feel hard. That is Nathaniel Hackett. That is Aaron Rodgers' stubbornness because he wanted Nathaniel Hackett, and even when he was in Green Bay, he didn't buy into a lot of the concepts that Matt LaFleur laid out to him because Aaron Rodgers didn't want to play under center as much. So the Jets, they are relying on an older Aaron Rodgers to carry them. And this defense looks to be slightly regressed. Like I said, I think it's going to be fine. It was the 49ers. The Jets, I think, can play great defense against almost every other team in the NFL. I don't think it will look that bad. And Robert Sala, this is a make or break year for him. It absolutely is. The clock management, the game management. Your defense not having counter punches. We're going to be in a lot of primetime games this year because of Aaron Rodgers. And the Jets are going to have a lot of opportunities to showcase what we're actually made of. So my biggest concerns from that Jets game were Nathaniel Hackett and they were Robert Sala. It's the coaching of the team. If there's one thing that's going to hold back this team, it's not so much the personnel, it's the coaching. Because I think the personnel is fine. I think this defense will be fine. It has the talent to continue to be fine. Offensively, Mike Williams is only going to get healthier. Hopefully he stays healthy, though. 
But I think an underrated tidbit in all this is that Devontae Adams could be asking out of Las Vegas relatively soon. And if he does, and the Jets have Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams and Mike Williams and Brees Hall, we're talking about a different offensive weapons room. One of the best in the NFL, if I'm being quite frank. That is a long shot, even though I don't think it's as unrealistic as people think because Devontae wants to play with Aaron Rodgers again. Aaron wants to play with Devontae, and the Raiders are not going to win a lot of games. They might be 1-6 in six by Week 7. That's what they might be. That's just how I feel, though. The Jets lost 32-19. to 19. The score looked much better than what the actual game was, and the biggest concern to me was coaching because – the Jets in the first quarter showed me that they have the talent to keep up with the 49ers. The three quarters after that showed me that we were severely outcoached and we did not have a plan for the Niners defense and we did not have a plan for the 49ers offense. We looked lost. We played slow. We missed tackles. That can be fixable. It's only week one. But my biggest takeaway from that game was I can't buy into the coaching. That is still a big wait and see for me.